Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing tons of stuff for Zen 4. Ryzen 7000 is easily going to be one of the most interesting launches this year, along with Raptor Lake, of course, and all of the GPUs. Raptor Lake and Zen 4, I think, are going to be really duking it out. And I'm going to get more into what I've personally been hearing about the two later on in the video. But I want to start things out with IPC information and performance, as there have been a couple of very interesting updates and I want to begin with Grayman55 on Twitter. 18% is what he's been hearing the IPC improvement is over Zen 3. Now he does caveat this by saying that he's not 100% certain however several of his sources have told him this. Now just to add personally speaking I've heard the old figures were just insane. I heard up to 25% or so with, you know, even more when you add the clock frequency. But more recently, I've been hearing much more conservative figures around 12% up to around what Grayman's saying here to around 18%. It depends basically upon the source. And unfortunately, what they're not doing is giving context to what workload this is actually in. Is it an average? Is it single thread? Is it multi-thread? You know, what's the angle of the sun and the moon and the trajectory of the earth at the time unfortunately a lot of this is just not given context now amd to their credit haven't really made too many claims yet they basically want to see how the chips fall so to speak and figure out things like what the final clock frequencies are, are of the processes before they make any final claims what they have said is that they're looking at over 15 percent but you can see how ambiguous those claims actually are and then robert halleck said yeah, we've been sandbagging, um, and we've seen up to 40% improvement. Now, to be clear, we're looking at 16-core engineering samples here versus a 5950X. And in the engineering sample that they've demoed on stage, it was hitting 5.5 gigahertz, but this was a lightly threaded workload, basically games. That's not quite single thread, but it's not the same thing as, say, a heavy Cinebench R23 run. I have heard that it can go up to like 5.7 to 5.8 gigahertz, the more recent silicon. But again, it's not final, so your mileage may definitely vary. And it's going to be very interesting because I do feel that AMD are going to have a deficit when it comes to uh, multi-thread performance versus Intel's um, Raptor Lake. And in my previous video, I mentioned that I was hearing that Raptor Lake, when it comes to DDR4 versus DDR5, actually DDR4 uh, performance is going to take a hit because of the additional energy efficient cores. But I've basically got a little bit more information from, you know, that statement. And basically, they've said that gaming, most likely DDR4 memory, isn't going to be too bad, even with a 13900K. But if you have an application which really hammers the memory system, really just, just absolutely hammers it, the caches and everything, so it has to do a lot of I.O. reads to the memory, that's when DDR5 can start to shine. So perhaps content creators, that type of thing, could possibly start to really notice DDR4 versus DDR5. The normal thing, though, we also don't know, for example, how susceptible Raptor Lake is going to be to cache, um, you know, sorry, to uh, higher latencies on the memory. So it's going to be very interesting. My prediction, and this is based upon what several people have told me so far, is that if you want gaming performance, probably AMD are going to have the edge. If you want kind of content performance, if you're looking for multi-thread performance, Intel probably going to have the edge, but <laughs> it's going to get more interesting when you go lower down the SKUs because Intel obviously can kind of segment their lineup a little more because they've got those energy efficient cores as well. Basically speaking, it's going to be a very interesting scenario, I suspect, with Zen 4 and uh, Raptor Lake. I think that this is probably going to be some of the tightest competition we've seen in the market. The good news is, from AMD's perspective, of course, DDR5 memory is starting to crash recently. I see. I think we've seen like a 20% or something like that drop in memory prices for DDR5, which is actually pretty impressive. Okay, now let's shift our focus to GPUs. Again, one of the bigger launches of this year are definitely the graphics cards, RDNA 3, as well as RTX 40 are shaping up to be absolutely ridiculously powerful. 
Copity7 Kimmy has said that the TGP of the 4090 is still a mystery. The PG139 SKU330 still has the opportunity to achieve its 600 watts. As for the 4080, it could be 450 watts, and the 4070 possibly 400 watts. And additionally to that, they added that the 4080 has a 420 watt TGP and still uses AD103 with no performance data yet on the RTX 4080. Now, what I'll say honestly about the 4090 and 80 and so on is NVIDIA are definitely doing a lot of tweaking. And that's why I do not believe that we're going to see a launch of these cards in July, which of course was an older rumor. I'm pretty certain at this point that it's going to be much more likely to be August or September, um, which again is not a new rumor. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen it floating around, but that's pretty much what my sources have been telling me. And it just makes sense historically based upon what NVIDIA have done in the past. July would just be a little bit too early. And there is definitely a lot of testing being done by NVIDIA. I have, um, let's say, some contacts with AIBs, and they've basically told me that they have um, seen an RTX 4090 being tested, but it was not being run in the full capacity. I don't exactly know what they meant by that. Was it something to do with some of the SMs were being disabled for whatever reason? Or perhaps was it just that the GPU wasn't boosting to the appropriate clock frequency? This is just an example. These are not real clock frequencies. I really want to be, you know, really clear. I'm vastly uh, exaggerating this. But if, for example, it could hit 2.5 gigahertz, was it only boosting to like 1.7 or something like that? Again, I'm just making those figures up as an example. But... Um, yeah, I did hear that it was hitting low 400 watts, but it was still doing absolutely insane. It was still just over double an RTX 3090 in raw performance. I'm going to be very interested, to be honest, um, what the actual configuration of these cards <laughs> ends up being. I suspect that NVIDIA and AMD are both deliberately putting out quite a bit of misinformation. Um, to try to basically make these cards as mysterious as possible. I have said this in a previous video, but just for example, having a 4070 be the specification that was originally intended to be the 4070 Ti, for example, could have massive ramifications of which card is on top when you're looking at uh, graphs versus, you know, AMD's RX 7000 series. And I feel that the marketing here is going to be even more important from NVIDIA's perspective because, of course, they're most likely going to be more power hungry. There's also another rather interesting piece of news actually concerning the RX 7000 series that I want to just throw in here. And this is from C Sonic, who are, of course, a pretty well known uh, PSU manufacturer. So C Sonic have actually put figures for the RX 7000 graphics card series into their power supply calculators. And, of course, we don't exactly know whether these are final figures that Seasonic have been given or whether they're guesstimating based upon tons of rumours. But long story short, though, the 7900 XT would require between a 750 to an 850 watt power supply, depending on the CPU that it is being used with, and, of course, you know, tons of other conditions as well. Now, that does kind of match the... I was personally hearing that the power... Um, requirements of the RX 7000 series are lower than what uh, AMD, the, what NVIDIA's are, excuse me. You can see the figures on screen yourself right now. Basically, 375 to 450 watts is what I heard N31 hits. And then, as you can see, N33 is, relatively speaking anyway, kind of sipping on the power juice. But, um, yeah. I don't know if Seasonic have been given the final figures or whether they're basically speculating based upon the rumours. And that's about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Apologies if the audio is a little echoey or something like that. Um, I'm actually recording away from my home at the moment, but uh, normal service should resume tomorrow. I actually kind of got stuck away from home actually because of, let's just say, <laughs> train difficulties. But as I said, normal service shall resume hopefully tomorrow. Take care of yourselves, guys. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.